Hello everybody, welcome to JD's Journeys. My name is JD and today we're going to another country in the Read the World project. So today we'll be looking at Angola, which is our first sub-Saharan country. And this should be a pretty interesting one. I've read some of the book descriptions and there are some very, very interesting books in here. So if you don't know anything about Angola, it is in Africa and its language is Portuguese. So a lot of these books will have been translated, of course. While doing the research for Angola books, I found that there were three authors that stood out the most. And it seems that two of them are actually of European descent. However, they were born in Angola. Before I continue, I just want to mention that I always appreciate your input, so the comments are open below. Also, if you like this video, then please like and subscribe. So let's take a look at the authors and books. We open up with a very interesting looking book. This is The Book of Chameleons by Jose Eduardo Agualusa. Now, this unusual novel about the landscape of memory and its inconsistencies follows Felix Ventura as he trades in a curious commodity. He sells people different pasts. He can create entirely new pasts full of better memories and complete with new lineage or augment existing pasts as needed. Narrated by an exceptionally articulate and rather friendly lizard that lives on Felix's living room wall, this richly detailed story explores how people can remember things that never happened, and with extraordinary vividness, even as they forget things that did not, uh, that did in fact occur. Now, this does sound very unusual, very interesting. It's narrated by a lizard. Who would have thought you could have a lizard narrating? I have a feeling that this would be a very unusual one to read. Our next book is also by Jose Eduardo Agualusa and it is A General Theory of Oblivion. On the eve of Angolan independence, an agoraphobic woman named Ludo bricks herself into her apartment for 30 years, living off vegetables and the pigeons she lures in with diamonds, burning her furniture and books to stay alive and writing her story on the apartment's walls. Almost as if we're eavesdropping, the history of Angola unfolds through the stories of those she sees from her window. As the country goes through various political upheavals from colony to socialist republic to civil war to peace and capitalism, the world outside seeps into Ludo's life through snippets on the radio, voices from next door, glimpses of someone peeing on a balcony, or a man fleeing his pursuers. A General Theory of Oblivion is a perfectly crafted, wild patchwork of a novel playing on a love of storytelling and fable. Also very interesting, it, it seems like this author has very unusual style. Can you just imagine an entire book based in one room? Next up is Good Morning Comrades by Onjaki. Luanda, Angola, 1990. Ndalu is a normal 12-year-old boy in an extraordinary time and place. Like his friends, he enjoys laughing at his teachers, avoiding homework, and telling tall tales. But Ndalu's teachers are Cuban. His homework assignments, including writing essays on the role of the workers and peasants, and the tall tales he and his friends tell are about a criminal gang called Empty Crate, which specializes in attacking schools. Ndalu is mystified by the family servant, Comrade Antonio, who thinks that Angola worked better when it was a colony of Portugal, and by his aunt Dada, who lives in Portugal and doesn't know what a ration card is. In a charming voice that is completely original, Good Morning Comrades tells the story of a group of friends who create a perfect childhood in a revolutionary socialist country fighting a bitter war. But the world is changing around these children, and like all childhoods, Ndalus cannot last. An internationally acclaimed novel already published in half a dozen countries, Good Morning Comrades is an unforgettable work of fiction by one of Africa's most exciting young writers. This one is uh, seems a lot more normal. I mean, a childhood's life in a country that is seeing upheaval, like revolution and things like that. So this would be a, probably a pretty good insight into what Angola was like. Our next book, I couldn't really find a very good summary of. However, it has a very good rating on Goodreads. 
and this is Mayombe by Pepetela. And it says, Pepetela's novel is a fascinating study of the tensions produced by racism, tribalism, and sexual morals. Now, I have a feeling that this has a lot to do with uh, what's happened in Angola at the time. Uh, it was originally published in 1983, so it's been around for more than 30 years. So we'd probably have a look at what life was like in the early 80s in Angola. And our final book is The Return of the Water Spirit, also by Pepetela. Set in Angola in the late 1980s, a time of war and when the Marxist-orientated ruling elite became engulfed by corruption, nepotism, and rampant capitalism. Three centuries earlier, a hideous crime occurred, the beheading of a slave who had had inappropriate relations with his master's daughter. Now, in the very same Kina Kinahihi, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Kinahihi Kinaksiksi, na. Kinahihi Square in the city of Luanda, buildings are falling down one by one, baffling the country's engineers. Many describe this mysterious process as Luanda Syndrome, God's punishment on a degenerate society. Drawing on the essence of African mythology, which had all but been obliterated by history, could this be explained by the return of a water spirit, the Kianda? The novel focuses on the interplay between the, these two forces, the forces of old and new. Just like faith can move mountains, the spirit of the water can move cities. This book is a scathing critique of Angola's ruling elite the abandoning, uh, for abandoning their socialist principles in favor of rampant capitalism. Okay, so this is definitely a political one. Yeah, be interesting just looking into uh, Angolan mythology. Hmm. Have you read any of these books? Uh, please let me know in the comment section below if you have and what you thought of them. Also, if you know of any other Angolan books that are available in English, also please let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe. Also, you can check out the previous country and the whole playlist is right here. So thank you for going on this journey through literature with me. See you in the next video.